I would like to uh, call the meeting to order. Okay. It is now 606 .06 on Monday, August the 28th, 2023. I'd like to call the meeting for the Woodbury Select Board to order. Do I have any adjustments to the current Select Board agenda as published? I do have an adjustment, yes. All right. Should I tell you what it is? You should tell me. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about the Wi-Fi at the town office again. Okay. Can we put that in somewhere? I would like to put that in after we are finished with the town clerk's report, please. Okay. Other adjustments to the current agenda? Okay, we are in the process of reviewing bills and payroll orders. Um, we're about halfway there. The minutes from the August 14th regular meeting have been reviewed and signed. The minutes from the August 25th special meeting have been reviewed and signed. And now we are open for public comment. So is this for anything that's not on the agenda? Is your thing on the agenda? No, you're just going to... See how government works. What? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? See how government works. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> like he has an experience. <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Like that. So, near, not hearing any other public comment, um, I would like to call for the town clerk's report, please. Mrs. Tricky? Okay, we have, or still have, 20 dogs that are unlicensed for 2023. We have sent out the three notices. There's one for each one of you. And those are the people that are still on the list. So, normally at this point, we would turn this over to the dog catcher. Mm. But we don't have one. <coughs> okay. So what do you want us to do for our next step? Oh, goodness. Mm. Oh, this will be the constable with that. You don't buy those either. Yeah, we don't have one of those either. Oh, yeah, we do. Oh, yeah, we do. We do. Uh, yeah. Barry, you yeah. might be willing to do that. Michelle always comes in late. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, um, mm, but I uh, I am willing to make these calls. Mm. Okay. Do you want to split it, Chris? I'd be happy to take some. No, I like... think that I'll just call, okay. and then at least there's one person calling and consistent messages. consistent consistent message. Mm -hmm. um, so this this will be my my responsibility. Okay. I'll make the calls uh, over the next uh, two days and um, make a request that they come in with their current vaccination records and um, pay their pay their fee. Okay. Does that sound that like a good. reasonable first step? Yes. And when they tell me that they're uh, not happy with me, yeah. it's still on me. Mm. Okay. okay. Yes. Who's this person with the five dogs? <clears throat> Eddie. I actually, I would have to look at the license mm. to see where she actually mm. lives. Yep. Uh, Sometimes so, people move out of town and they don't tell us, but <laughs> and and it's all it's yeah. all it's all worth a call. And maybe yeah, some yeah. of these people I can cross off the list, and other people maybe they will. Get a friendly well, reminder to. I can tell you, none of those cards were returned. None were returned. Oh, none were returned. So that's telling us that they still live here in town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Either that or the forwarding expired. Didn't, didn't work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Thank you, Mrs. Turkey. Mm -hmm. And then we have a complaint about a dog barking for the last three nights up at the top of Tibbetts Road. Put that down here. Mm -hmm. Any 
police. When I was on the phone with the person, they said it was barking at that point. He says, but during the day, it's not as bad as it barks all night. He's concerned that the dog's being left out right. all night. Okay. Do they and nobody's at the house. This is a big concern. Um, we don't have an, a, a number or an address for that homeowner by any chance. Mm. With me right now, no, but I have it at the office. Um, mm. I'll talk to you offline and see if I can get a number. Okay. I'll just put that on my list of calls. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Street. Thank you. <clears throat> and we have the gallon property that wants to do a reappraisal. Reappraisal is the right word, right? Yes, ma'am. Appeal. Appeal. Appeal, Appeal to their appraisal. assessment. Mm -mm. And that was the packet that I handed out with their correspondence with it. Yes, ma'am. I don't think that we're having not been able to work through it just yet i don't think that we can right. put an answer on that but i think that right. it is something that we can review no i mean it and we're talking about a meeting for it on september a 5th, 5th. A board of here a board. i tried calling the school today to get permission to use this room on the 5th okay but they haven't mm -hmm. called back yet mm -hmm. okay. and something else that i noticed the little green telephone books that hardwick put out yes ma'am mm -hmm, has got the town of the woodbury town office listed with the school's telephone, telephone number, number. Mm. and it also has the highway garage listed as the Woodbury Town Office. Okay. Uh, and there's no Woodbury Town Office in there. Mm. Mm. Um, I'm not going to take that on. Does someone else want to maybe take on a reach out to Sure, call the phone book that? people. I can do that. So that uh, it's not going to be corrected in the published version, but at least it's going to be corrected on the digital version. Okay. And maybe we can post something, Skip, if you don't mind, what? at some point. Just post a correction to... Oh, okay. So that I think those numbers are on. The numbers are correct on the town website. Yeah. But a statement saying that if you're going to use the Hardwick directory... Um, don't trust the numbers. Use the numbers that so are published a on the that website. Just came up. It yes. is, is basically yep. incorrect. Can I ask you they, one more time? So the town clerk's not listed. The school is listed. The, well, it's got the Woodbury Town Office, but it's got the school's phone, phone number. number. Okay. Huh. And mm. and then it's got the Woodbury Town Office with the, the highway garages the phone town number. Garage. Mm. The oh, okay. So they just got one line off somewhere. Who knows what else is wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so and I never would have caught it if I wasn't double checking my number to call the school today. <laughs> they have a hard time with that phone book. I mean, that phone book is full of people that are dead. If you haven't noticed. Oh, yeah, really. <laughs> is it top of the and the numbers keep getting smaller and smaller because they the, can't. I didn't manage. see an actual there is no, a line for the town. There garage. is no direct address for the town mm -hmm. in that new published book. So if we could just have a disclaimer on the website saying, please use these numbers. Sure. Okay. Because we're confident mm. that they are correct. That would be terrific. Sorry for your trouble, but I really appreciate it. Okay. Um, and then for the flood estimates, I got one from Lizzie for sheetrock in the basement, and okay. I'm still working on the stuff that we lost, getting prices to replace that. Okay, so we have one one estimate so far. Mm -hmm. And the concrete, finishing the concrete floor. They haven't gotten back to me yet. Good, but you did reach out for yep. that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we talked about the grant that needs to be signed. Yes, ma'am. And we're also going to have to have a meeting to with. Civil authority, I believe it is, which would be the justice of the peace. So well, that's the, the hearing. Select it's board. The hearing. No. Yeah. Oh, you need. Oh, it's one? a different one. Yes. Oh yes, ma'am. Okay. Because we have to go down through and clean up our checklist. Mm. Uh -huh. Every other year. What's our checklist? Got it. For voting. Oh, okay. So we'll have to go down through it line by line and say, oh, this person moved out of town. We can take them off, send them a letter, and got it. Okay. 
or this mm -hmm. person passed away. Okay. Do you have a proposed date that you would like to meet for that? It's going to have to be before the 13th of September. Good gracious. So. Okay. Uh, Does one date work better for you people than the other? I think we're going to have to get back to you. <laughs> okay. After we all figure out our schedules. <laughs> okay. Um, but now we have a, a time frame. <clears throat> but before the 13th. Got it. Okay. And Ooh. that's everything that I have on my list. All right. Um, I'd like to sneak you in about town office Wi-Fi, please. Oh, okay, sure. So um, I know we talked about this uh, a few meetings ago, and it, you know, kind of then the flood happened. It didn't really go anywhere, but. Um, I still feel pretty strongly that it would be for the benefit of our town to have the Wi-Fi there be password protected. Mm -hmm. um, we have pretty bad drug issues going on and there's not a lot we can do about most of that, but this is like one thing we do have a little bit of control over that could, you know, at least help getting that traffic out of the public space or mm -hmm. the offices and make it a little bit more difficult. Um, so. I'm proposing that we do that. So when it's after hours, um, we do have people in town who take advantage of of the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So what that would mean is that they would have to know to come and get the password yep. from the town office and be able to use that um, if it's after hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I guess I'm to even pinpoint it a little farther. I'm also suggesting that we have the password change maybe once every couple of weeks, um, mm -hmm. just so that people, so it does keep people coming in to ask, so that we're getting people who are willing to come in the building and have a conversation face to face. Um, and I'm just hoping that that would weed out some of the drug traffic and other problems. I think that's a reasonable request. I think it's just going to make it harder for people who, I mean, there are people, a lot of people out there who don't have Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and it's uh, just going to make it harder for them, and I don't think it's going to help the drug traffic, but might push it over to someplace else, I suppose. It's still going to happen. Can I, not to put you on the hot seat, but you're at the town office, like, mm -hmm. more than anybody else here, and I'm just curious, like, just from your perspective of somebody who sees what's happening in the parking lot, do you feel like you see more people just pulling in in their cars doing what looks like legitimate sitting and doing stuff on their phone or laptop or do you see more stuff that doesn't look legitimate? I would say I would lean towards more that's not legitimate because the ones that are coming in to use the Wi-Fi they stay there for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. The other ones that just stop in and take right off is like let's say okay I'm here come meet me mm -hmm. you know okay. so you're saying that the ones who stay there like for a half an hour looking at their email and stuff those are the legitimate ones the that's, longer ones that's yeah. what I would say yeah. because you don't you look up at the security camera and you don't see another car coming in mm -hmm. to meet up with that car mm -hmm. okay um, Unless Skip they're there, unless Skip. they're the watchdog. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Skip, may I put you on the spot for a second? If we had a, if we went ahead and put some sort of rotating password protection on that Wi-Fi. Okay. How much effort would that take? How much effort would it take? Yeah. It would take someone to go down there with the login credentials. Right. And be able to <clears throat> change the... Uh, Password on the uh, modem. Okay, so we couldn't have it. So that. So I don't think you can set up anything that's automatic. That's automatic. Yeah. It so we couldn't do the ro we couldn't do like a rotating intervention scheme or anything like that. On RIS. I think so. All right. At least I'm not aware of anything. It may, maybe, but. <clears throat> okay. What would be the idea for not having for having them change it every? 
Um, well, I sort of stole the idea from when I worked at the health center. They did that with their Wi-Fi. They had it public, mm -hmm. but they had it change, um, like, every, I don't remember what it was, every few mm -hmm. weeks. Um, and they had the same thinking behind it, mm -hmm. was that it, you know, it would force people who wanted to use it to come in, have a face-to-face -face interaction, mm -hmm. which most people don't mind, but mm -hmm. it's going to keep people out who are mm -hmm. maybe doing things that mm -hmm. are not legal or, you know, are just generally not willing to... Mm -hmm. Talk to another person. Well, I think it's a very good point. Um, can we investigate how much effort it's going to take for someone to actually be doing this? Um, I can investigate, although um, Wi-Fi and tech is sort of my lowest, um, uh, it's so the lowest on my talent uh, list. How about I? How about how about I take that one on? Okay. And I see if I can do an RIS for a rotating system in there. It shouldn't be that big a deal. If we, if we decide on some sort of schedule. A protocol or something like yeah. that. Okay. How to? Norm's got a question. Uh, I'm sorry, Norm. Oh. I apologize, sir. Yeah. Well, it's just, um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I'm just thinking that in, in the event of a power outage, it would be good to yeah, eliminate the password protection because then that's when people need to use it. And, that's uh, a really good point. Mm -hmm. have that's so a really good point. If it's possible, do it. I don't know if you can log in remotely to do it anyway. Okay. That I do not know. I don't believe that we can at this particular yeah. point. But that that doesn't mean that it's not something we can Maybe pursue. Maybe. Thank you for that point, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. I appreciate Advice. that. <laughs> appreciate that. Um, all right. Lizzie, any other uh, points that you wanted to make? I can show you some pictures I took of activity I saw in the parking lot. No, I think, that, I think we believe you. <laughs> okay. You don't want to see them. No, I, I, I think we're good. We did. I think that we've all been past there. Mm -hmm. know, where there nefarious, there's nefarious activity going on. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> nice ball. Ninja. Mm -hmm. Um... So, uh, Brandy Smith is not here tonight, but uh, we will announce that I can just sort of read through this, um, that as of the 28th, today, the Vermont Class 2 and Class 3 roads were at 18,50705. State of Vermont traffic fines at $112. Really a, really a kicker there. Uh, State of Vermont pilot grant nine two four eight zero zero. We've spent fifty six five eighty five point seven two for recording copies, taxes, pre taxes, and fire insurance. Um, our PR is at 11,286.62. Our AP is at 58,073.99. And in regards to this overall situation that we find ourselves in, um, we had a special meeting on the 25th where the overall tax rate for town was decided to be increased to 71 mm -hmm. cents. There's the... Yep. 71 cents a municipal. for a municipal tax. Uh, we will publish the minutes of this um, as soon as we can after this meeting. But we agreed on a 0.71 cent or point, uh, 71 cents um, for our municipal tax uh, and that will be associated with their 2023 bills that will go out from Brandy Smith um, in the <coughs> coming days so just channeling Brandy add it to really quick. <coughs> this, the uh the school tax rate, which comes from the town, we end up with a residential tax rate of $2.33 uh, per $100 of assessed value and a non-residential school tax, or non-residential total of 
which is not very far off from last year. True. And the tax bills were mailed today, so you have something to look forward to by the end of the week. Can't wait. <laughs> The checks are going to come flying in. Yep. Skip, please. Go ahead. Does that tax increase uh, take into account the expected increase in the road crews work based on the work they're doing for flood no. recovery? It does not pay attention to that. We're expecting um, a certain level of FEMA grant funding. Mm -hmm. yep. They're only going to pay 75. Well, actually, the state pays another 12 and a half yeah. percent, I think. So we're getting, but still, we're getting close. Yeah. So it ends up being about 87.5. Yeah. It's like 87.4, 4856, <laughs> something like that. Five. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Um, so we're close, okay. but Just it curious. does not focus on 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 that difference. This makes us closer to the municipal rate based on what we voted on for town, a town meeting last year. This, well, this year, essentially, it gets us basically within the budget, but not paying overages on any of the stuff that we're working on right now. Good, thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, Mr. Larrabee, would you mind doing the uh, road commissioner's report, sir? Um, so, mostly just flood work. Uh, we've cleaned up, since we last met, we've cleaned up the, the park across from the fire station. It's as best we can. It's not ready for grass yet, but it's got, I've got the heaviest of the boulders and whatnot. Uh, cleaned up, and that material is all going to Nichols Ledge, uh, Excellent. which is under, underway. Uh, we started up there today, added a culvert, and, added a culvert, and then started putting that, that material in there. That's, uh, that's great that you're being able to recycle some of that material. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's good. It's good base it's, material. It's, it's good base. So, yeah. yeah, that's put great. Put it in the bottom and then put some decent stuff over the top of it. Okay. Um, what will you put over the top? Uh, probably the three inch bench grade that was on it before. Mm -hmm. um, there was a project there a couple of years ago that that's what was put on there. So we'll probably do the same thing. Um, uh, I guess, I mean, that's really what I've been focusing on is, is making the roads passable. We've gotten a lot of uh, top dress already on the roads where they were washed out real bad, which usually put your three inch minus on first and then you put the three quarter over it, and, right. which makes it smoother and easier for riding. A lot of that is on, there's still a bunch more to do. But uh, I've kind of switched my energy to the class four um, and that kind of clean up the cleanup in the, in the village there. So that's sort of where we're at. Um, I, our budget's getting wiped out, and I, I know that. Yeah. There's not a lot I can do. I mean, we have to have the materials, and we are just going to hope that FEMA helps us with that. Yep, no, we're working on it. We're working on it. I think that we're all working on it. And you're meeting with Skip? Ways. Meeting with Skip tomorrow to start putting my notes into a form that is federal government form. Yeah. Uh, you. So we'll Eddie. spend some time on that. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate that. I have, I reached out to Ruggles Engineering about the two bridges. <clears throat> that I failed to get them engineered and he is totally booked. He can't even begin until next week, next spring. Oh. Okay. So that was not good news. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna continue to reach out to other engineers because I think that's an important thing to get started on. Mm -hmm. We have to get started. Yeah, yeah. We have to get started, like at least we can sort of put our hat in the ring. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So I'll continue to 
We'll reach out to engineers to see what their yeah. interest level is in availability. And those have to be engineered. There's no way on no that. There's no getting around that. Okay. It's FEMA money. It's yeah. state. state. We, we have to. It have to. It has to be an engineered report before we can actually get any funding for it. Mm -hmm. ECI. What's that? ECI. Uh, yeah, I can reach out to them. Yeah. Yeah, I can reach out to them. Um, I can check with the Wolf Engineering, although in the past they've always been more money. They've but, been high, but yeah. at least we'll get some quotes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. ECI has been willing to be around. They're working in the neighborhood, okay. essentially. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, anything that we can get a quote on, even if it's mm -hmm. even if it's a highball, mm -hmm. the more quotes are better, because right. then we can we can go back to FEMA and say, hey, this is our range. Right. Anything we can do to give them a sense of the variability is going to help us. Yeah. So it, it's more work on you, and I'm sorry for that, but. And yeah, you, no, you reach I'll out, reach, and you reach I'll out, out I definitely want to, I, I would like to have that coward <laughs> knowledge <laughs> as, well, as to what, you know, as to what it's going to cost. It's a good thing, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, and I know that engineering takes a certain amount of time. And yep, I mean, some of these companies have some pre-engineered structures that they're willing to put out there. Mm -hmm. Right, well, the structure itself is not the issue, it's the... It's the abutments. It's the you know, that's where the engineering room needs to be solid. And that's, you know, we need a site visit and we need a quote. Yeah. So anything we can do on that front, I yeah. think would be useful. So yeah. I'm sorry to put that on you, but yeah, if you, yeah. if you no, can reach out a little bit, that would be great. Job, right? yeah. Well, it, um, yes, it is your job, but it's a... Uh, it's a pain yeah, in the well, I think, I and think you have we're to also doing a little bit extra because of this flood. Well, we have to, you know. And so, right. and, and I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, any questions about roads? All right. Wow. I know. Great. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do have a question. Okay. 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 Just, <laughs> like, just waiting. Just waiting. I'm just wondering. Sure. Um, so you're going to work on Nichols next. You haven't worked on that yet. I started today. Oh, you started today. Okay. Yeah. Um, is everything else um, in pretty good shape right now? Um, yeah. I mean, everything is passable. Uh-huh. And like I said, a lot of the places that majorly got washed out have the top dress already on them. Uh-huh. Um, there are still a few spots here and there that, you know, that are minor spots, like down here, but just coming off the pavement. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. But that's that's an easy fix, and um, yeah, no, I think we're in pretty good shape. That's awesome. I mean, I'm not yeah. going to say we're done because we're far from it. But mm. absolutely, we're fine for buses to travel. We're uh -huh. fine for people to get to work and get home. Um, so yeah, I mean, as as issues come up, we'll have to pull off from the class fours. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming the rail trail is going to be next. That's sort of my next victim. I think that that is an important thing, but we need to have a road squared away before we yeah. worry about the rail trail. So is the in the rail trail road. is the town highway department doing the rail trail? I guess I was I understood it differently, so um, I wasn't clear on that. We haven't we haven't actually figured it out yet. Oh, okay, gotcha. Which is why it's it's going to be back burner for okay. a little while until. Yep. Yeah. Isn't there some sort of legal document that compels the town to take care of the rail trail? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so... It's not that we're not taking care of it. Right. It's just that okay. our our Class 3 and Class 4 roads are our higher priority. understand. Yeah. So I'm thinking to, towards next Thursday's meeting with FEMA. The person who's going to take the tour with Alfie is going to want to see that rail trail. If... Yep. If we're going to take care of it, that along with all the other roads that Alfie's been been working on. Yep, I okay. I completely agree. Okay. That it has to be reviewed. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's our first priority. Okay, but it's I don't think it's our second or third priority, to be honest. But I think that it's a it's our responsibility, it's our responsibility and we recognize that. Okay, and we have documentation. I saw that that yeah. that that says so, um, but. I want our class three and class four roads to be in as good a shape as possible. 
it's going to be winter in no time. Those roads have to be passable. Sure. Um, and then we can we can start to worry about the rail trail. So, and, and other work that's not flood related, like the East Hill culvert, <laughs> is that going to be on your list for this year? Uh, um, well, it certainly just depends on the weather, mostly. Uh, like I said, I mean, I think most of our roads, class three and four, or two and three, four, are all pretty good. Mm -hmm. Not four. Four, we got a lot of work. Four, we got work to do. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. Uh, we got a lot of work to do. threes are, are all, our main travel roads mm -hmm. are in pretty good shape. Uh, like I said, there might be spots here and there, there's a little washout or there's some bigger gravel sticking up, mm -hmm. you know, things of that nature that is fine tuning. But as far as I know, everything is open. Mm -hmm. Impassable. But it's still a little raggedy looking in a lot of places, so that'll be good for the FEMA. You, right? Well, that's what they recommend, is <laughs> yeah, right. to, to leave it a little bit rough, <laughs> rough, so that, rough. that it's obvious to, yeah. what, to what they... We have plenty of photo documentation, though. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I may, there are yes, please, Skip. Thank two you. categories of work. One's emergency, and the other one are permanent. Permanent. So mm -hmm. I believe what Alfie's been doing is more the, on the emergency side. Mm -hmm. and, and that's... When you start grading the roads and putting the top dressing on top it, you top say? Dress, yeah then that will be more of the permanent work. And we have up to 18 months to take care of that permanent work. Yeah. After the meeting. Exactly. After this meeting. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. Right. So with that said, I mean, I can't, I can't leave them in emergency stage because, mm -hmm. you know, no. we're getting, we're going to get complaints. It's rough, <coughs> it's bad, it looks terrible, it blah, blah, blah. So I've been a little bit yeah. mixing it some. And you have so to. Some spots I have done it's, the permanent work, like the, the resurfacing and. As long as we have documentation, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, and that's yeah. the reality. Right. We have to have passable roads. Yes. So, I mean, and that's, that's your job. Make sure that people can get to work. My kids can take the bus, like, right? Right. But as long as we document, 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 and that's everything I've heard from Fiona. Is the more documentation we have, it, you know, we've got a leg to stand on. Um, I mean, I, I, I think that you're, you're doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. For example, one road, you've gone through and you filled in the potholes and the ditches pretty much that will show up on one report but then you go back to that when you go back to do the fittish dressing on that road will that it's be okay. on the same report you think or another report it's a different report, it's a different report. well then <clears throat> that'll be part of my presentation <clears throat> the differences in reports yeah okay but okay. Uh, <laughs> Never mind. yeah there are categories of work when you do a damage inventory yeah. there are categories of work and one, like I was speaking about earlier, one's the emergency and mm -hmm. the other is permanent. Mm -hmm. So in essence for say Blake Hill Road, right now the emergency work has been done. And I'm um, presuming that the permanent fix will come maybe next spring or something like that. <clears throat> so that'll be categorized as permanent work. So the damage inventory, which I'll get into, uh, will reflect that. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Larry, you okay? Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. We appreciate it. I don't want to just belabor this because, uh, Mr. Lindsay, you're going to have some time to. I'm going to belabor it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Cerruti, would you uh, sure. give us a status report? So, flood recovery status report. I'm chasing my tail a lot. Um, we've got the building um, dried out and closed in. We ended up uh, opening Pandora's box. We found a large section of the back wall was rotten from the chimney leaking. And we also found mm -hmm. that the chimney was deteriorated to the point where we ended up just pushing it off the building oh, and good gracious, rebuilding man. the back wall to get it secure. Um, probably f insurance is not going to cover that part of the work, so we'll have to deal with FEMA on it if they're going to cover it. Um, I have not gotten a phone call or meeting with FEMA yet. Do you know if they're going to be doing ours at the same time? They're at our disposal. We can take them anywhere. Because I haven't had my phone call or my 
Not yet. Mm. I think we should try to marry it together. It's supposed to be if a thing. We will. The problem is we're in two grant categories. It's, we're under private <coughs> props. I don't know if it's the same people. So. Well, hmm. I can I can drop them a note. You can find out. I tried to find out, but the guy left, and I don't. I was out last week on vacation, so. So so. Yeah, he skipped you. I'm planning. I'm planning to be there next looks. Thursday okay. anyway. So we'll. Thank you. We'll see. Um, I, I, I I would really like you to be there. Yeah, yeah, we're planning, I'm planning okay, to be there. Good. Yeah, you accepted the invitation. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. good. So we've got the building enclosed. Um, uh, have not been able to find a contractor to give us a price on repairing the building. Mm -hmm. um, had a terrible time with the insurance company getting them to understand that we still need to function. Um, for example, we had a terrible motorcycle crash and I got covered with blood and we had no washing machine to mm -hmm. clean. Mm. Which we got that one working enough, so I, I barked at them, and we got a twenty-five thousand dollar forward for some of our stuff. So I'm proceeding with getting the washer mm. fixed and getting a gear dryer ordered, hopefully soon. And mm. um, the uh, furnace company's coming to give us. You know, they gave me a price. Trying to get I'm concerned that in a six to eight weeks we're going to need heat. It's insulation, so it'd be kind of nice to. Uh, so the four to six weeks. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we'll have an Indian summer to make up for the wet, but. Um, we are in the town hall. I do need to clean it up. It's a mess in there, but that's on my schedule. To, um, so we may have to address whether we need to keep meeting in there this winter. It presents some challenges because the main hall is not really heatable. So, but uh, again, I'll bring that up when I know more information about. Okay. It, it looks more. They're saying another two to three months before we may be settled on damages. Mm. Um, our contents were somewhere. We're over 35. We're probably going to be less than 60 on contents, you know, uh, and yeah. the equipment that was damaged and lost. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing the building's going to be in the 100 range, neighborhood for building repairs. Again, we got to argue about well, how much siding they're going to repair. You know, so there's all that stuff. Um, it, it seems like the insurance company's going to cover pretty much everything about the building and in the building. Mm -hmm. um, again, other than project creep, like the chimney and whatnot. Um, anything outside the building, so all the cleanup around is all going to be FEMA stuff that I've got records of our work cleaning that up, and um, so we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, we will, um, so, so I, again, I'm guessing that at some point we're just going to put some insulation in the walls and, and probably park it and, for the, for park the it. winter. Yeah. Because I just, I can't. I called a few people and I'm going to go call some more this week. I just, I get ready. I get, Chirp, chirp. <laughs> it's it's really hard Everybody's to find a contractor. Busy and yeah. Again, it's not. Is it a crisis? No. The getting heat and insulation will be, and then I may have to get some lights. And we have half the lights aren't working for whatever yeah. reason. But anyway, we'll we'll cover that, and uh, right. so I'll keep you up to date on that. And in our town hall usage, we'll have to figure. We'll out have to talk about things move forward. Yep. Um, we will be applying for our our. Uh, stuff that we did in cleanup wise and also for the response which is, i'm sure Steve knows is another category for the different calls that we were covering calls for the i think they're covered from the ninth through the or the 10th whatever it was the day before it was the 10th it. through the i think the 15th yeah so so we were just, we uh, we're up to just about to have our 140th call and we normally have about 110 so we're going to be pushing 200 or more calls this year so it's been pretty busy um <coughs> What else have we got? Um, I did. I, I did. I hope you all got the email. I can't know if I got everybody's email address right. Uh, I, I did uh, fill out the notification about a potential buyout for that building. I saw it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that means or where it goes, but I, I do know when I got the last email that it says that the town would be the applicant for that. I guess. And we got the guy across the streets in the same boat. He's so in the same position. We'll right. work through that whenever mm -hmm. we hear. Um, yeah, we have officially talked to you. We about haven't it. actually heard anything back yet. Yeah, yeah. So just wanted to make sure because I sent the email since we're here, and I just wanted to make sure we talked about you it. You think so, that's a good thing? That would be a good thing to do. Well, I've got concerns about dumping 150 some k in there and having another three feet of water go through. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I, I wasn't that concerned about mm -hmm. it, but now I'm kind of concerned things, about yeah, it. Yeah, things have mm -hmm. things have changed. So um, we somewhere. were we were pretty much put out of business there for a little while. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, not a good. So I don't know what that means. And we'll have to we'll have to have that conversation when they may do nothing, which means we're going to have to fix it. And they may it may be a road we want to go down, and that's a conversation we all got to have. When yep, I don't think we're ready for that. Yeah, we'll see what comes up. Yeah. That's part of probably why I would hold off on doing 
even if someone could do the major repairs this winter, I probably would just hold. My thought would be to just hold off. I think triage. I think we're in triage mode. See still. how. See how it. Yeah. Might go into the winter without repairing your wall. No, no, no. We would insulate and put a vapor barrier. Oh, okay. In and then fix just, the furnace. We do okay. the minimum to like, make it really use, simple. Okay. Make it fix functional. Fix the lights that I'm having some problems yeah. with, but okay. try not to spend a ton of money. All the money. Mm -hmm. You know, we leave yeah. that the outside kind of sealed up, and we can finish doing that. So will the insurance company pay for? that so what they're gonna my understanding is that we own it all out right they're gonna we'll end up once we settle on the damages we'll just get a check for all those damages oh. and it's up to us okay. to buy things and that's kind of because you sent me twenty five thousand, and we just have to keep track of what we bought yeah we still it makes me a little nervous because again i they say they're covering all this stuff but i always wonder you know if they're no gonna, it's all receipt based if though. They well if they're gonna nitpick like yep. keep we every did, right so we're keeping all so that but again some of the stuff i just have to fix mm -hmm. so like the washing machine is to buy a new one's like 15,000. I think for a couple thousand bucks, we can fix it. That mm. there's a new motor and a new soil. It's all stainless, mm. uh, things like that. So that's what I'm working on is getting somebody in there to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just so keep that's, track. I think the best I we mean, can do at you this already, point. You already know, just keep yeah. track of every Yeah, we're, we're scrupulously, silly yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've got a special budget category and all the receipts are going mm -hmm. in. Thank you. Because we're gonna have, Whatever's outside of their coverage, FEMA then can step in. We can and why we can FEMA. worry about applying. So if, I don't know how much project creep they'll cover, but I know they'll cover outside damages to the driveway that we cleaned up and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we've got to assign a value like uh, that work day, all those people. There's certainly a value mm -hmm. um, associated with the work that was done. Mm -hmm. So that's with half a town coming out to yeah, basically yeah, because that's got to, we got to get some value for that instead of saying mm -hmm. oh, it was free for money for it. So now I use it. Yeah, no, you got to put in for it because you have to put in for it. It's a negotiation. And your members, I mean, days, right? Oh, we've yeah. got hundreds of hours into yeah. this. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, tired, yeah. and a lot of people are tired. We're trying to get back to actual training, which we haven't been able to do, which is unfortunate. We've yeah. got a lot of new folks, and it's yeah. just getting people up to speed takes a long time. Mm -hmm. And when you're spending it doing other things, it makes it difficult to do the job you're supposed to be doing. So, I mean, that's so that's where we're at with that right now. Okay. I don't think I think that's all I had mm -hmm. for. Flood and updates, and then we can discuss. I'll listen to your report. We can talk. Appreciate it. And I'm just gonna work as much as we can. I don't know how we're gonna do this. Mm -hmm. Well, it's up to you guys. We'll help as much as we can. So, any questions for Mr. Cerruti? All right, uh, Mr. Lindsay, can we have the recovery officer's report, please? Sure. Thank you. Uh, we had a meeting on August 22nd with FEMA. It was a conference call. This was the initial meet and greet meeting. Uh, the attendees from Woodbury were Norm and myself. And uh, from FEMA, woman Michelle Thoris Miller, hyphen Miller, uh, she's a program delivery manager for FEMA. She'll be leading us through the process of doing damage inventory and everything that goes on after the damage inventory is completed. Will she be on the site visit? Pardon me? Will she be on the site visit or is she remote? She'll be in Woodbury. She will be? Yeah, I'm okay. sure, yeah. Okay, okay. And also on the call from FEMA was a gentleman named Gabriel Smith, who I believe will be doing the site surveys slash inventories. I don't know who else they might be bringing. They might be bringing or four more staff numbers, but I know that those two folks will be in Woodbury on the 7th. Okay. Okay. So uh, the meeting, in essence, was led by Michelle, and uh, the focus of the meeting were categories of work, because the first thing that has to be done is create this damage inventory. So she went through emergency work categories A and B, which are debris removal and emergency protective measures, which would be you know, getting the roads going and removing any type of debris uh, from fire department or from or town offices. Uh, and FEMA also needs the cost of the debris removal. So if we have any invoices, if we rented some sort of dumpster or we had Perry and Sons take this stuff away, we'll have to know that. Uh, <clears throat> also, there are six categories of permanent work we found out, uh, of which one are roads and bridges, which we'll be heavily involved in. And then others, such as water control facilities, buildings and equipment, utilities, 
parks, recreation, and other facilities, we may not be as focused on those as roads and bridges. And lastly, there's a category Z, which is the place where you capture any administrative cost you have, including voluntary labor. And there's been a couple of emails, Norm forwarded an email to me from a gentleman whose last name is Rose from Vermont Emergency Management, stressing the importance of capturing category Z work so you don't leave any money on the table. Mm -hmm. So we'll be certain you do that. Yeah. <clears throat> so through the conversation, FEMA wanted to get a sense of the magnitude of the destruction of Woodbury. And they asked us how many roads we had. Uh, <clears throat> so fortunately, fortunately, right on the wall in the town offices is a list of roads. Mm. So I said, yeah, we have 74 gravel roads, or 74 roads of which three and a half miles are paved, and the rest are all gravel. So we gave them a ballpark figure of every gravel road in Woodbury was affected. So it was kind of a hedge, but in essence, <laughs> I believe it was. I don't think it's actually high, totally yeah. true. Some worse than others. Hey, hi, yeah, that's true. Well, but also completely true. Yeah, true. There wasn't really a single road that didn't have some sort of Erosion damage within, with, with, within on a, on a, and they base it on a meter scale, right? Yeah. So within a meter from one section to the next, right? Yeah. There, there was some effect sure. that three, has to be dealt with. Three something miles of class of paved roads? Something like that. I remember. That right? Seems like a lot. Yeah, it does seem like a lot. Does it? Yeah. Maybe yeah. those are. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's the total of the class two roads. Some of part of which are travel. Right. I remember there's yeah, I there's a report that, that, that we have. There is a report that we have to cite. Yeah. Uh, I can look that up. But anyhow, she <laughs> she and her team got the sense that we're mostly gravel roads. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that they were all impacted. That's, that's, that's true. And they're all impacted. Yeah. Yeah. And they also asked, you know, who repaired them? Who's doing the emergency work? Are you contracting the work out? And I said, no, we have a dedicated road crew that are working overtime just to get mm -hmm. the roads passable. And they're doing all the work themselves. That's accurate. Mm -hmm. That is accurate. Yeah. So also she asked how many culverts, we have to capture the number of culverts that we've replaced, mm -hmm. also the number of bridges that were impacted and are replaced on an emergency basis or a permanent basis. We'll have to understand that. Okay. We have a record of that. Yeah. It's not going to be hard to do. Yeah, I'm yeah. going no, yeah. to sort through Alfie's notes tomorrow. That's right. Yep. We'll have it out for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we also discussed damages to town buildings, and this is where it got interesting. Mm. Uh, naturally, FEMA would cover the damage to the town offices, but we also talked about the fire department. And Norm, did you get a sense that FEMA believes that, the same sense I got, that the fire department also, the fire department building would be covered in some way, shape, or form? Well, you know, we, we, we talked about that after the yeah. meeting, too. It's just that. I'm not sure that they were 100% clear on, we did mention that it was a, a private nonprofit corporation that the fire department yeah, But do they own the building or is it going to be some kind of, you know, like we figured out that the town owned the school building but we didn't really know that five years ago. But no, no, the fire department owns the building. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. do. Yeah. 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 yeah, we own the building. But there's no oh, okay. question about yeah. it. was always my understanding when I talked to FEMA the first time is that we first had to recover everything we could through insurance, yeah. and then they're going to kind of be the gap. Insurance. That's every private, everything, every, every yeah. right. Right. right? So we go That's through insurance. That's ballpark we fall in. We might be different for the town office. Mm -hmm. Right. Town office is going to offer. It's pretty clear to me that they're going to cover the gap, whatever that happens yeah. to be. Yeah, but and there is going to be one. The, the question is, was whether it's covered under the, the town's uh, the work that that you're currently doing with the town stuff, or whether it's a, like you mentioned as a separate category. Uh, we're right. applied under so, a separate yeah. program, so it gets a little. But we'll we'll work this out when they come. Yeah, I've been through this process once. It's a little dicey, confusing, but. Oh, this is I still have my paperwork from last time. I have a big, thick file from last time we did this. 
We also talked about the post office building, too. Mm -hmm. oh. And that's owned by the Ladies Auxiliary. Yes. Yeah. Is that a nonprofit? Yes. Yes. And so, again, FEMA was of the opinion that certain aspects of the recovery part of, for that building could be covered. So, which mm -hmm. led Norm and I to scratch our heads again and say, okay, that's great. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, she was right there saying, you know, all that stuff's fine, but I'm not sure she understood the distinctions. Yeah. Yeah, she was on definitely a time schedule. Mm. It's important that we have these people on site so they yeah, can they understand the things. And that's the whole point. They have to yeah. see it. Mm. So some just, of these things you just cannot do. No. In a does, it, does the uh, post office building have insurance? Yes. Yes. So some of that might be covered if it's not. Being, okay. Yeah, so we also talked about Nichols Pond Road. So mm -hmm. what? And that situation where, you know, it's kind of in limbo now, I guess, who's going to fix it? It's being fixed. Yeah. The, the response that I got when I asked the question of the, whatever the website was that VLCT led me to was, class four roads are covered if the town can show that it's a, a road that they usually maintain. And then it needs to, and they would do it anyway, and we would do it anyway. We'd do it no matter what. Yeah. So. This is one of them that they would cover. They, depending on how much uh, documentation they need to show that we have maintained it over the years, we can get that. That's not hard to document. We have to dig a little bit, but we can. It's not hard to document. Well, we have, a, we have a, in our code sheet, we have a code for class four For gravel. class four yeah. gravel. So we just look that code up and it'll show when and how much money we put in the gravel really on that road on that road interesting yep. Yep. Hmm. so that would be easy proof yeah and i think they had a culvers the last time around and greg probably knows and yeah. they did that work so yeah. yeah and then met that standard i think i copied you on that yes yeah. so about that mm -hmm. yeah. so i'm going to continue to move forward on that Yes, please. Because my machines are there. And I'm it's it would be crazy. It would be, it would be, it would be crazy not to move yeah. forward on that. Yeah. With every with all the gear out there. Mm. Yeah. So. So, again, FEMA stressed that all kinds of documentation are required in order for them to process our claims successfully, and those are photos, invoices, timesheets, work performed, where it was performed, by whom, cost of materials. Uh, cost to run the equipment, you know, we we're leasing the excavator, and so we'll need to capture those costs as well. And again, those types of works that work efforts will be categorized as B for emergency or C for permit. And I'll do the categorization, so we don't have to. Well, you have to tell me if, if it's a permanent, but then I'll categorize them in the uh, inventory. Mm -hmm. Uh, a FEMA member will need <coughs> Alfie's assistance touring the roads and compiling damage and repair information for the roads. And they indicated, as Diana mentioned today, that the minimum amount that FEMA would pay is something like $3,800 for a repair. A project. A That's project. Per, project. per project. It's a per project, project basis. Right. So Based on what, I read. what they're going to do is divide the town into quadrants north, south, east, and west. Okay. So I don't know how they're going to do that. It's not my job. And, you know, they'll uh, aggregate all the road repairs, cost, and cost of material, cost mm -hmm. of equipment, cost of person power, and uh, assign that a project number and a dollar value. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I'm trying to suggest that. Uh, to make things work well for you, that you put together your quadrant map and present it. Oh, good idea. Because, we have a uh, you know, you make know, one. Just, <laughs> you know what you're doing and how you'd want to try to figure that. And yeah. You know, right, so right. they're going to go like that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you. They'll probably use your suggestion. If you put yeah, something right. forward for them, then you might get what you want out of it. What time are you good guys meeting? Mm -hmm. 10 a.m. Put a map together. <laughs> mm. Yeah, a map together. I'll put a map together. 
I'm pretty decent at putting maps together. Like it's one of the things I do from a living. So. Well, like already you've got Route 14. <coughs> but, I can, but I can certainly you establish to... reasonable quadrants. I was going to get my map on one map. So here you go. Oh yeah. They'll be impressed with that. Um, yeah. Whatever. You know. You no, know. that sounds great. I mean, that's the, you know, that's, that's that would be the basis that I started with anyway. Yeah, that's the most. That, that is the available. most up to date, accurate, and state recognized map that we actually have for the town. It is. So, that's the one that we should work from. Okay. I'll get a copy. I'll get a fresh copy from the. There's several copies from the 911 board. Yep. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right, so again, the next meeting is September 7th, and uh, required attendees are Alfie, Paul, myself, Chris, if you can make it. I'll be there. Norm, if you can make it. <laughs> I know. And uh, again, I can't stress enough that this is a working meeting, and, you know, members of the public probably wouldn't get a lot out of this. Yeah, especially. Do you have a pickup truck that you can bring? Yeah, this thick. The guy handed me. <laughs> There's codes in there for everything. Start looking at them. Yeah. I think it's probably online yeah. now. Yeah. If someone has a pickup truck, we're gonna need it from paper. We got forms. Yeah. I'll show you my file from last time. Mm -hmm. It was small and it's this thick. So again, like last week, I showed you guys this. this little <coughs> the flow chart. Path, the mm -hmm. FEMA path. You know, so to speak. So we're here right now. We're about halfway through, but none of the work has really begun. Mm. So just for the kickoff meeting is again September seventh. And it, the last time I know they sent a f person that worked with me directly, and they may do the same with you. Uh, they sent a retired engineer up from North Carolina. Mm. He's going to be working. He or she yeah. is going to be working with Al. Yeah, because I asked for assistance too, so we may get two. Mm. Oh. They, they actually, the guy actually sat there with me to help me figure out the right codes. Oh, and the, right. That's great. Put the because like Skip's mm -hmm. pointing out the the format is really critical and picking mm -hmm. the right category is really critical and assigning a piece mm -hmm. of equipment or a person you can't just have equipment that doesn't have a person attached to it. And then you got to have two people, not just one, but you can't have four. So that's the kind of thing you mm -hmm. go. Unless our equipment is autonomous. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Probably not. Why not? Um, so they, they, they're <laughs> very, very fussy about the right number and the form, the right format. So mm -hmm. here's the damage inventory form. Ooh. Okay. okay. It's a pretty large spreadsheet which incorporates, you know, location. Let me put my glasses on. This is this is the largest I could print this thing out. Uh, Name of the damage facility to be a road. Uh, I started out filling for the town offices. Mm -hmm. And so location, state, zip, and it wants a lat long, so I can shoot a lat long for them. Uh, describe the damage. So right now I just have flooded basement, but it's going to be more than that. Flooded basement, mm -hmm. uh, debris, blah, 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 blah. Primary cause of the damage is a code for flood. Approximate costs, it's, mm -hmm. if you have any approximate cost of cleanup. Not yet, I don't. Okay. Do you have an approximate cost for repair? Not yet. Okay. You have the disposal, though, the debris disposal. Uh, all I have for sure is yeah, the dumpster. Yeah, so far. I have that. Okay. Right, but do they, they want it totaled, right? They want the total. Well, for right now, we, we have 60 days to fill this thing this is, out yeah, completely yes. after the meeting mm -hmm. on the 7th. So hopefully by then we can get some documentation. We'll put some numbers mm -hmm. on it. Right. Well, hopefully my computer works tomorrow, so I can start working on it. Your computer's down. Yes. Who's your computer maintenance guy? Skip. <laughs> skip him. Skip. 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 I call him Skip Number One. He's Skip One. He's the real one. Yes. Yeah. And it also gets into labor type. And what is this thing here? <coughs> and the ap applicant priority. I don't know if FEMA assigns an applicant priority mm. or not. Mm. I'm going to have to ask that question. Yep. But anyhow, it's a pretty comprehensive spreadsheet that, Seems like that 
Alfie and I are going to become quite familiar with. Yes. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I, can, I can hear the excitement in everybody's voice. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm sure I saw briefly Alfie's notes, and they look very comprehensive. So I'm not worried about that. No. It's just a matter of sorting, yeah. sorting through it. So okay. Thank you guys for making the time to do that. Okay. Just have a couple more things to cover, if that's okay. Please. Okay. Damage inventory notes. Okay, since that's the part of the project we're into now. Uh, applicants must identify impacts and damages within 60 days of the scoping meeting. And that's the meeting that's On happening in September. That's the scoping meeting. And if we want to request an extension, we can certainly do that. And they would rule on that based upon any mitigating cir circumstances. Okay. Uh, and what's a damage inventory? It's used to develop the damage description and a DDD document, which I'll get into that later. <laughs> the scope of work and the cost. And I think I had gone through earlier in our discussions, the damages are separated into different work categories of work. Mm -hmm. A, debris removal, B, emergency protective uh, measures, permanent work, C, for roads and bridges, D, for water control facilities, E, for buildings and equipment, which will be town offices, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and post office and also fire department. Mechanical and plumbing systems, if you have any issues with the mechanical and plumbing furnaces. Uh, and the site inspector will also take it upon themselves to add any individual components to the inventory that they deem necessary as they're mm. doing the site visits. Okay. Building contents are also included. They include uh, non-computerized items. And I got a question about that. If you if you flooded your know, server room, let's say, why wouldn't they pay for, you know, your service to I'm come? I'm not really sure why that is uh, characterized. Mm. It must be characterized in another location, yeah. but I don't understand that. And no. Building contents include non-computerized items and materials, including furniture, cubicles, exam tables. Do we have any exam tables? No. <laughs> Thank goodness. Heaters, fans, etc. Supplies, pens, pencils. Uh, mm. Contents of each building must have their own line items, so mm. that's going to be interesting. It's just that, a, it's an inventory. Yeah, we have to further break our stuff down to equipment, which is stuff that can be taken out of the building. Yep. Anything that stays in the building is contents. If it goes out of the building, it's equipment. It's equipment. Right. Has right. a different, totally different funding. Yep. Mm. And lastly, this category Z, which is management costs. And management costs would be things that, such as I'm doing, okay, any volunteer work, you, you capture those in terms of, it wouldn't be a cost because I'm, you know, I'm not charging anything, but it would be the hours expended right. to do this. Mm -hmm. And they would assign a dollar value to that and then give that back to the town. In well, some way, sure. Town clerk's time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's right. all time. Like it's when yeah. you're sitting there doing time. every bit of this time has right. to be captured. Yeah. For us, our response is all, all that time has to be captured. They assign a value, you get a check eventually for right. it. Right. And category Z, activities that are eligible include preliminary damage assessments, meetings, organizing damage sites into logical groups, like the quadrants for the roads, <clears throat> site inspection, travel inspection, site specific specific damage description, uh, collecting, copying, copying, filing, or submitting documents to support a claim, requesting disbursement of funds, and lastly, training. So there's a, a myriad of Category Z activities mm. that we'll have to capture. As best we can. Yeah. What is capped at 5% of the, of the, of the, of the total right. claim? And let's see, what can I talk about? Oh, we don't want to hear anything about the DDD report. I think I sent that out. I read it. Yeah, it wasn't that something. So It's uh, not terribly helpful. I don't think I... Interesting. I don't recall what that So was after about. you do a damage inventory, then you, uh, the FEMA folks, will put to, FEMA folks will put together a damage description and dimension. Dimensions. Oh, okay. Yeah. And 
they got forms. They got they got forms. forms. So I'll tell you what. Mm. <laughs> so this one just happens to be roads and culverts. So it says the road is 125, 125th Street North and 17th Avenue South. South. So this is, the following is a list of damage to the site. Surface aggregate 20 feet wide and 318 feet long, times a quarter of a foot deep. An embankment filled 20 feet wide, 300 feet long, blah, 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 blah. So this is what that site inspector is going to do. Put so something you, like this together and to recreate what any, you did, right? Any landslide, any, or any washout, anything mm -hmm. that we've basically added material to has to be encompassed. Yeah. Right. Plus, at least, at, you know, so three feet on both see, sides. This person that's going to take this tour is—is is this all supposed to be done in one day? I would hope not. It's not going to be. <laughs> is it, I, it's, I, I don't think it's, it's going to be literally days for you. impossible to do all in one day. <clears throat> I mean, there's, there's, we've covered a lot of ground in the last two months, mm. and I don't think we're going to see it all today. <coughs> It'll take two hours just to go up to West Woodbury. Mm. I was just there today. It's the most beautiful part of the world. Uh, like it there, too. So, that's my report. The station alert has arrived. All right. Any questions? Ooh, I got, I got days worth of questions, but I'm going to... Uh, save them until I can put them in some sort of okay. a comprehensive set of questions. <laughs> mm. Other questions? Mr. Lindsay, thank you for volunteering to do all this work. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. Um, Mr. Atkin, can we have the emergency management director's report? Okay, I'll sign for you. Uh, no, did, no, no, you're you're totally. We're actually we're we're right on time. We're doing we're doing okay, well. Okay, well, my time. <laughs> yeah, take all the time you need. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, well, let's see. Well, as you know, I've been working on the debris pickup stuff. The uh, my role. Well, I was asked by the emergency operations center to, um, you know, put it out there that they're uh, looking to do this pickup and to. Um, essentially organize it for them. So it was, uh, it took much back and forth with Steve Young at the state uh, to organize it, but um, my role wasn't really to oh, necessarily visit the site or anything like that, but just to pass along the people that requested the pickups and be clear with them in terms of what's allowed for pickup but based on what Steve told me. So that's pretty much what it was, and back and forth to get the information I needed. And, Got that to them. They did their pickups on Saturday. Um, they they left the metals at this point um, because uh, that's goes to a different location. And sometimes they have a scrap deal will come pick it up. You know, they'll arrange a scrap deal and just take that stuff. Or, and if not, they'll come back and get it themselves. Um, and then I did uh, contact the owner of the yellow building. I won't bother mentioning the names, but the uh, to see about uh, getting rid of the. Um, the debris there, and um, and because he had, hadn't responded um, before, prior to Saturday, prior to Saturday's pickup, so I, I checked to see if they would uh, be able to come back and do that, and they said they would, so mm -hmm. uh, they'll be able to do that. And I, I talked to them about um, that they can do that, plus some other stuff they need to put out from the basement that was flooded. So, okay. and it's. Um, I guess he still has four feet of water in, in the basement from what he said. Good gracious. Okay. He'll have to dump it out in order to be able to get that stuff. And he has someone coming to uh, also to deal with the oil tank anyway, so he has to pump it. So we'll get to remove this stuff. So that's what's going on with that. Um, the, uh, the rail trail stuff, I did go take a look to see just what was going on there. I don't know, have you personally visited it yet? Yeah. Yeah, so you know what's going on. Some of the damages must be over the Hardwick line, not not the big washout. I guess that's just inside. Yeah. See, I didn't go into Hardwick. I I went as far as where the spring is, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that's close to the Woodbury Hardwick line. The line's way down on the flat. It's yeah. on the flat. It's below yeah, that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't probably didn't walk far enough. Yeah. If you want to see the, the major wa washout, you need to go, go from the Hardwick side. It's, it's not that far in that way. Okay. But then then there's some work that needs to happen to get there. So. Some of that must be in Hardwick, um, so I don't know how that's handled. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's uh, something maybe, I don't know, because the, the fame and claim isn't, I don't know if it's going to be for the quote rail trail or for Woodbury section of the rail trail, so that's maybe another thing to have to yeah, figure right. out. Although the major thing, of course, is that it's maybe what, 20 feet wide by 20 feet deep or something in that area. There must have been a culvert there, you would think. It yeah. was, yeah, it was, blo it was blown out. It ended up basically downstream. Yeah, you know how big the culvert used to be there? It was a, I think, a six foot. Six foot culvert. I haven't seen that, that site. Yeah, it's, 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 it's shredded. shredded. You can actually find it downstream in pieces. <laughs> down, like, down over, over the down. bank? Over the bank. <clears throat> yeah, just the it compl it basically completely blew out into the landslide. So that, landslide. that big culvert is definitely in Woodbury? I believe so. I, I took a took a picture of it, and I've got the latitude and longitude from that. Um, and and there was like the tell from the maps, and, and you probably know anyway from. You. Yeah, I can. I can. I did plot, try to plot some of those. I went out yeah. and walked them. So. Mm -hmm. so okay. Yeah. So, uh, so you I can. You, I can plot some of those and send them more. Yeah. yeah. You probably want to be sure of that because that mm -hmm. would be a bigger issue if it, it wasn't it, in town. If it's not in town, but I'm pretty confident that it, it, yeah, sure. we have ownership. I think that was that. definitely in town. I, mm -hmm. and, and I'm pretty sure we have ownership of that. Yeah, but so. then there's some some washouts prior to that. Um, <coughs> that may or may not be. So those aren't the major ones, though. <laughs> compared to all the other stuff you're doing, that's mm -hmm. by the mouse anything. But right. um, so anyway. So the other big I, washout is that the one. The last S turn before you get to the flat. That's what I think. So that's, flat. that's the last one. That's, that's the, the big that's washout. That's the big washout. Yeah, that's in Woodbury. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty well. I know it is. But. Yep. <laughs> because the line is way out by the greenhouse, by the greenhouse. on the flat. Yeah. yeah. So we, I mean, we have ownership of almost all the damage. Yeah. Mm. Yep. You know, the small washouts are. There are some places in Hardwick that appear to be. You know their responsibility, but if we're gonna go in there anyway, it'd be better to leverage Hardwick for a little bit of money and just get all the work done. <coughs> Before yeah, we, well, I can I can give the town manager a call uh, and just ask him what where he's at with that, what his thoughts are. Yeah, or, or maybe you know, in order to get the main washout, you're gonna need to fix those along the way. Mm -hmm. They're not coming mm -hmm. from that. You side gotta have to come in from the Hardwick side no matter what. So yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, when you, when you see what it is, you'll know what. Yeah, <laughs> see, I just, I walked it. I just didn't walk far enough. Yeah. I walked to the spring, and that's as far as I went. Yeah. Of course, it was, you know, I felt like I should be doing back, other things. Doing other things. Yeah. And so I, I appreciate that. You know, <laughs> so I just did what I saw, yeah. and, I, and then I turned around <laughs> and went back. Yeah. Um, but there are a couple it. other places that are. Okay, they're around. Um, another walk. So I was going to um, consider doing a survey to go out with the tax bills, and for that matter, I finished it off this morning, figuring only to find out that the tax bills were put together over the weekend, so uh, <laughs> we missed that one, but um, which is just as well, because probably it needs more work anyhow and should be part of a bigger planning process anyway. So, so no loss, no foul. It's just yeah. another step in the, foul, in the process. Also, um, the, the, the town put together that mit mitigation plan, which has a lot of uh, the information that would have been part of a process. That's a, that part's already been done, uh, essentially, although I guess I have, we have to update that plan, I believe, That's next correct. year. So, yep. um, mm. the uh, other class four roads, the, um, I, I know there's a bunch of class four roads we haven't really talked about yet, and I, I think at some point maybe I'll get together with you and, and see just which those are and the board and yourself have to make decisions on which of those you're going to actually fix mm -hmm. up. Yeah, I mean, there are some was, other ones around. I was, yes, I was thinking of that also when we were talking about FEMA because if FEMA's gonna, if they're eligible for FEMA, they're going to want to look at them. Yeah. And some of them are going to be very difficult to access at this point. How about the little bridge down near the, the town line? Um, that little trailer up there. Yeah, That's we've replaced there. that bridge before, and I yeah. think she said that there was like a hole under it. Now, have you looked at uh, that I've at looked, all? I've looked underneath it. It is setting on level. It's not 
but it's it's all solid. It appears to be all on solid okay. stone and, and concrete mm -hmm. abutments. Mm -hmm. There is she called today actually there's there's more washing going on mm -hmm. from her driveway right at the, the entrance of the bridge. Mm -hmm. I mean we could get FEMA to look at that and see uh, you know maybe to sure it up but it's I mean it appears to be solid to me but it's just it's a little wonky it's out mm -hmm. of out of level but we could certainly add that to our list of bridges thanks for review yeah yeah I, I don't know how much of that you want to go through for this visit before you know just what you want to do with them anyhow mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know, if, you, if you're not sure that it needs to be fixed yeah. There's going to be a lot of back and forth with FEMA right along. That was the whole point yes. there was that This is a scoping meeting. Spent, so let's just put that out there. Was and this be is a scoping meeting. So some of this may want to keep in back pocket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, but in terms of other class four roads, I think maybe uh, maybe for the next meeting, try to look at some list of them and go review them and see what which ones you want to deal with and which ones are, mm. you may want to convert to trails or just not uh, not fix it more than you have to. I think the obligation, what is just the culverts and so on, on class four roads is what has No, to maintain them in a whatever passable condition they were in. When we took them on as historically. Well. But I, and I'm not even aware of all of them necessarily, but I think I'll, you know, we'll leave that for another day. So I'm just thinking that's yeah. maybe something I'll get involved in, try mm -hmm. to figure out. Yeah. No, I, I think that's important to keep on the, on the burner. Also because, um, I believe, you know, I was told by the, the woman that uh, deals with it that the Lake, Lake Champlain Basin is going to come up with another round of grants for some flood damage stuff. Mm -hmm. And it may be that certain projects may want to do uh, would work better going that route than, than FEMA, among other things, they pay 100%. So Yeah, it's a match. Uh, we may want to check into some of, the, mm -hmm. some of this stuff to see. I did make uh, those two phone calls today. Um, to the VTrans people, the project manager and the District 6 um, supervisor to, to ask what their intentions are as far as this culvert, how far they're going to go upstream and downstream uh, because we might have to, you know, I think the Lake Champlain might be a good fix for getting some design work on how to repair the stream, which we might not be able to do right now. And, it might be better to do it after the Yellow House decides what it's going to do, because that could be part of it. But, of course, you could do a whole design and then only do part of the construction, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, so it sort of seems like the state's holding that whole works up. Right. And it has been for years. Yeah, right. right. But I did talk to some state workers there the other day, and they said they were thinking of doing a temporary pipe this week. Really? Which is what she thought, the lady thought. Oh. Okay. Um, it would be nice if we knew that. Mm. Yeah. So, so you didn't get hold of anyone? No, I didn't get any call back, of course. No, I've yeah. called twice as well. So. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they're going to deal with that whole situation. Well, they, gotta, they have to do something. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. clearly so. have to do something, whether it's a permanent or a temporary uh, And they fix. knew that five years ago. Mm -hmm. well, well, in well, fact, the, in that. In the initial, yeah, I was going to say the after initial, after the initial request went in 2011. Mm -hmm. um, so they fixed the pothole when I stuck a cone in it. They, they came two days they, later. That pothole was wrecking cars. They back they walked over and shut the been cone been in this for a long time. <laughs> fixed two um, days later. So that's the answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy that we can't get a call back at this point. Mm -hmm. but that's yeah, not no. unusual. Frustrating. Yeah. Well, if I stayed in play, it's just the phone, it's like, whoa, <laughs> who is this? <laughs> Norm, please continue. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Oh, no, that, that's fine. I, I think that's pretty, pretty much my list. And uh, I, just to say that um, we should think about it. Once they stand up, what Lake Champlain Basin stands up that new program, be good to uh, maybe at the next meeting uh, or keep it in mind uh, the kind of projects that may. Uh, be appropriate for that mm -hmm. and as soon as I know what it is I'll email it out so you'll know mm -hmm. what the program is and then um, you know if you have some thoughts about things that might be good let me know yeah well essentially it's always interconnected waterways which is essentially think. our entire town mm -hmm. yeah right. so headwater starting in my yard <laughs> <laughs> in my 
Yeah, it's half of it goes to the lower river. Yeah, the other half of it goes down to the rescue. Right here. Right here. We're at the range. We are in the drainage divide. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Mr. Lindsay. I just have a couple of things that I forgot to mention. Um, <laughs> so far, I've uploaded three documents to FEMA that they requested. Mm -hmm. The town purchasing policy, the town insurance policy through passive through the League of Cities and Towns, and the local hazard mitigation plan. What I don't have any clarity on is the personnel policy. Okay. Uh, the personnel mm -hmm. policy, the one I saw, had there's a paper copy that was, had edits on it, and I don't know how recent those edits were done. I think the, uh, the date I saw on it was a 2021 date, and so they, FEMA, need our personnel policy along with the pay chart that we use now to compensate our employees. Did you get that yet, the pay chart? Because we just signed one a couple of months ago. Yeah. It was after June 28th. After July, yeah, okay, July 1, yeah, at the beginning of the fiscal year when the raises took effect. She, okay. Brandy did one and she had us sign it. Yeah, that one is set. That, and that's valid now. Is that There is a personnel policy that is on like the books. Yeah. There was one that was in review as a modified draft. Right, that's the one I've seen. Okay. Um, I, I have the original one that I worked on in 2018. Oh, and there is there is a an updated version. Okay, but that it, hasn't still is, been finished. It, it hasn't been finished. Right. So, so understanding I mean, that that it hasn't been finished, let's use the twenty eighteen version. Kind of stuck with what the we twenty eighteen <coughs> version. Let's use the twenty eighteen version. Okay. Yeah. And someone. I can send it. I have the twenty eighteen version. Oh, okay. I do. I have that. Okay. But what I need is a pay chart, the current pay chart that you're utilizing to compensate. We've signed it. So. Okay. I should be able to find that in the files. Okay. Yeah. yeah otherwise, yeah. I can send it along. Yeah, it would have to be some sort of signature on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and it's all signed by all okay. by all of us. It's a little uh, Excel spreadsheet with each name and yeah. their rate of pay. Rate of pay. And that's for fiscal year twenty twenty two. Two. Four. Four. No, four. Four. Sorry. Four. 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 Twenty twenty four. Sorry. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, it would be great if you could find that. Yep. And then I make me a copy and I can scan it. I was relieved to find that that old pay chart, the one that came from some state book at some point, some BSCA thing, that that actually had an expiration date on it. So we all do. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't hang a not no. No longer really part of the name guy who held worked very hard on that initial page. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I, if I mm -hmm. can get that page chart. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. I'll do that first thing in the morning, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you both. Okay. Can we switch um, a couple of these things in case Alfie wants to get out of here? Can we just take up Valley Lake curve realignment? I'm happy to make that modification. Sure. And, and. Is it okay that I want to get out of here too? Yeah, <laughs> fun. So a couple weeks ago, I sent um, information to our attorney on how to um, satisfy what we need to do to alter this road. Um, uh, he was busy on a trial for most of last week, but then uh, I talked with him on either Thursday or Friday. Uh, some of the things that I had emailed him, he couldn't open, so I put some in the mail, and hopefully he got them today. But anyways, what he told me was that altering a highway is has to go through the same process as if you were just discontinuing or laying out a highway. And I foolishly printed out the whole statute here. Um, the thing is, it all requires a 30-day notice to the adjoiners 
And he was going to look into how far you have to go as far as the adjoiners. How, how far you have to go if you have to notify everybody on the road, which, you know, Valley Lake Road is quite a long road. So that's as far as we got. I sent him those a additional documents and the uh, list of things that the, uh, the um, Macelles asked about <coughs> and uh, the plan. and So that looks like it's going to be a bit of a hold up for that process. It does say under Title 19, Chapter 7, Subchapter 2, laying out, altering, reclassifying, or discontinuing highways by petition to select board. It talks about if persons who are either voters or landowners can petition the town to lay out a highway or alter it. And then it also says the select board may also initiate these proceedings on its own motion. So that's what we're doing. There has to be a notice and there has to be a hearing and uh, all the things we read about when, the, when we looked at those documents from 100 years ago. Yep. <laughs> Select word, who's it? And, yeah. So anyways. So that might not happen this year. I think we have plenty of other work to do. No. To be totally honest. Yeah, but are we going to keep working on this as far as getting the. We're going to work on this. Yeah, the process. The process so, to, so that so that yeah. when spring happens, yeah. we can hit it. I'd like that. That would be the goal. And even but though we I would really, have. But I really don't think that it is worthwhile to plan it as a project, a physical project, right. for the fall. I think we got all the work to do, and it's going to take us probably yeah, three. Th it's going to take us three. Month, it's going to so. take us like three months to actually get through all this, mm -hmm. based on what I've read. Mm -hmm. So we got to start it, but let's have it ready to go as like a first first go spring project. Yeah. Any chance that since we no longer have a time constraint that we might get an engineer, or you're still determined not to? I don't think we're determined not to. Well, you and you and. As we were confident that you didn't need one. I still, I am still there. I, I, I really, I, 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 actually, I tend to agree that we don't actually need one to, to do this. But um, if you want to, you know, if you want to throw some money at this that we don't have, I love it. Yeah, I wouldn't want to add cost if it's not necessary. I have high confidence in our, in our, in our road commissioner that. Well, part of this redesigned. process will be a site visit, so that'll. And they can decide be if we've. If, if we're off track, but mm. I don't see that being a problem personally. Mm. And I'd love to not spend uh, my a quote, the, my initial yeah. quote for have someone do the site work mm -hmm. and realign it was mm. almost $10,000. What? This just seems like an incredible amount this, of money. This, what? It was from Ruggles. For that, bro? Really? I never saw that. Huh. Interesting. It's just a, it's a, a it, it's just an incredible amount of money. So oh. I should see that ten thousand in my pocket next week. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let me just give that. Let me just give that ten. Let me just give that ten k real quick. I'll do it for half price. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, okay. I just, so I, I so I. I just wanted the, to throw that out. The, there. the point is, I think that you know we can go with the process of actually getting everything mm -hmm. squared away, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's something that we can prioritize for for this fall. Mm -hmm. I think we have plenty of stuff that we need to get done this fall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is that reasonable enough? For, I agree. With that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I just don't want it. You know, I don't want it to disappear. Out. No, it, it's not going well, to. Well, I've given it to the to the attorney. He'll start. No. Yeah. And we'll just pay for that. He has instead. to do. Yeah. He'll yeah. give him the ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Or more. <laughs> All right. Any other comments on violate curve realignment? All right. You can't leave yet, though, because we still have to talk about Nichols Dam, so I'm not sure why we switched that order. But um. Well, I, just, I didn't know if you were. Okay, you want to hear? <laughs> okay. Why do you come up with your own radios? 
Uh, yeah, we have that meeting. Oh. I did, had the meeting, uh, and we discovered that the repeater is there's a wire broken off of that. Oh, on the, the, yes, right. So uh, he was supposed to come last week, didn't make it. Uh, so I expect him this week to mm -hmm. at least repair that, and then I told him I also <coughs> to check all of our all of our mm -hmm. radios and all vehicles just to make mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Wires are good. They're transmitting mm -hmm. what I should. All of that. So, I'm very, I'm very mm -hmm. so the, 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 we're not we're not totally solved that, but mm -hmm. it, it's it's on his schedule at this point. Okay. Yeah. Right, it's in process. Sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. So Nichols Dam Road closing. Um, I went to the Hardwick Electric Department Commission meeting on Monday night. A lot of the same people were there that uh, came to our meeting a couple of weeks ago. And I just wanted to find out what they were being, you know, what, what, what the heck they were thinking of. Come to find out, the manager told them that I made a complaint on the behalf of the select board that somebody was camping up there and that was the reason they decided to close it off, which I explained to them was really unfair because it wasn't a complaint. I just told him that in a conversation. I thought it was odd that somebody was allowed to camp up there because uh, the Hardwick Electric Manager just went up there and told him to leave and that was the end of it. But it wasn't the end of it for the, he told the board <coughs> that they have to, uh, that they should close it off because it's unsafe. I mean, and then we had the flood and they did have to make some repairs and I can understand closing it off while the, the grass was growing and the repairs were being made, but they did a really nice job. And the uh, owners association up there, they made it clear that they're not interested in having the beach party, the beach part, um, the swimming part uh, cordoned off to the public. Um, and I don't know whether anything I say. I also explained to the board that that Myron Ashley deed from 1916, well, not deed, but they went through the whole road upgrade process and they did it right. Um, they had the select board, the site visit and all this, and they, the select board agreed to throw up the other road that Mr. Ashley didn't want through his pasture and gave a right of way. Right. And so the uh, analysis that the Harbrook and electric manager gave them was that, well, there's only a right of way, there's no road. But as of the time that that transfer was made, there, there was, was no road. road. But then there was a hundred years of road building since then and we have a hundred years worth of well probably 50 maybe 70 years worth of maps you know state highway maps that show that uh, that road on the map I think we have a lot of evidence <coughs> but but the way uh, Sullivan spun it was like there, there was no road it's just a right-of-way so there's no public road there that's just not true so did they indicate that they were considering taking the gate down? Yeah. What was the no. what was the no, end? There of was no. No, there was no. They, they this so woman that I, I suppose Norman and I are going to meet with this Lydia Parker in a couple of days and talk about whether there's some way to work things out. But at this point, they're okay. they're showing that they're unwilling right. to do anything different. Right. Okay. And it's not to do with, it's not a temporary situation to let the grass grow in. This is something they're planning to keep up permanently? Well, I, I couldn't say. Okay. But it kind of looks like it because they yeah. did a... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I did it They too. put these big, big uh, concrete piers and there's a big chain that goes between them. Uh-huh. And yeah, it's locked? So yeah. The intention is... Is permanent. Yeah. Yeah. The intention is obviously yeah. not to But it could be out to unlock any time. <clears throat> Yeah, so I mean, okay. When is the meeting? Tuesday. Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. Yeah, Wednesday morning. Yeah. Tom? I'm just gonna. Eight o'clock. You were at the place. Ten? No, I mean eight o'clock. You were. Oh, place. Darn. Location? At my office. 
It's not really a public meeting. We're just going to try It's to just a conversation that you things. guys are going to have. Yeah. yeah. Directly with Hardwick Electric. No, no, no. With whom? With Lydia Parker, the one who, the woman who stood here and said that she had a lot of experience with helping towns do similar things. Okay. Okay. mom. And she also came to that. She also came to the Hardwick Electric meeting and told them the same thing. Okay. So as of now, we have no dialogue going on with Hardwick Electric. Right. Is that true? I just want to say that. Okay. You can. I don't. I don't. Can't say that. All right. So, so I. As much as I think that this is great that you guys are going to talk to, to Lydia. I think that the dialogue has to start with Hardwick Electric as well. Yeah. Senator Jenny. Oh, it's on our. It's on the retreat cycle. Yeah, it's an ATV. Makes a lot. Does it normally make that? No, no it's just yeah, an ATV. It's an ATV. Yeah. So, Chris, I had reached out at one point to, to is, is it Mike Sullivan? Is that yes, the, no. And got zero response for my email, but how do you suggest, like, do you have thoughts on how that dialogue would begin <laughs> if they're not being responsive to us? No, I don't have an immediate suggestion. Okay. I just know that it mm. has to happen. Yeah. I'll go rip the gate out and see what they say. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm hoping at some point this this board will agree that we have enough evidence that it's a town road, and then and then deal with whoever's using it or whether who wants to block it off or who wants to uh, gate it for whatever reason. It still has to start with a conversation with Hardwick Electric. You think? I do. Okay. You waiting for him to call you back? Uh, no, I keep calling. So oh, I'm going to keep... keep calling. Oh, okay. okay. I'm going to just call until uh, <laughs> I make somebody crazy. Okay. Yeah, actually, that kind of raises another issue. Please, go ahead, Norm. And I, I, I waited until this part of the discussion was over. Okay. <laughs> uh, they did repair the dam following the flood. Yes. I don't know if they're going for FEMA money for that and if it would be them going or part of the deal here. Um, and um, hmm. I, you know, I can call them and, and ask them about that, but um, whether they're going for FEMA money or not, or and then I, and then if they, maybe they are, maybe they aren't, maybe they've already done something, or maybe it's something that we need to get involved in. So um, why don't I try to at least find out that part? I would love that. And, and, and if I, you can let me know what you find out, yeah, I'll be yeah. armed with a little mm -hmm. bit more information for yeah, other people that I. Berate. I mean, they did. Uh, they hired a contract and did a substantial amount of work there. No, there's been a lot of work done. Yeah. But and it's nice work. I mean, nice parking lot. <laughs> <around. laughs> oh, they build a lot. Well, what, where, but they yeah. Are, yeah, well, it's a different conversation. They got a contract from St. John. From St. John. Yeah. From Saint yeah. yeah. Mm. Good point. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other comments based on our original agenda as published? Can we talk about the spring since you're here? The spring box? Mr. Hoppy, the, the hero of the spring. The spring box fixer. I don't know if I should call him a hero. Well, <laughs> anybody who gets it running is a hero. Yep, thank you for cleaning it out. Thank yeah. you. Much appreciated. Well, mostly. It wasn't running, and I saw Norman's um, reach out where he said he was going to reach out to the state. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my neighbor, Gwendolyn, had wrote um, a post about how many people are always yeah. out of water use. And yeah. mm -hmm. when I used to work for the state, I did some maintenance on it. So I said, well, I'll take a quick look and see what I can do. And got it going. Yeah. Are you willing to be like the go-to guy? <laughs> <laughs> please say no. Somebody please has say, to, no. Say no. Somebody please, has please, to ask. Please, please, please say no. Please Why? Say no. no. Well, what, what was Why the problem? Why shouldn't he? Um, well, in the spring box, there was some debris that plugged it. Oh. It was trickling a little bit. So um, the spring box actually should be rebuilt. I don't know. It needs it to be replaced. Got the ownership of it. No. Technically, we do. Let's do it. So who does? Oh, so we have some so 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 who, technically, did you say technically we do? Technically we do. We own the grill? Mm -hmm. 
That's a beautiful it's a, it's, it, yeah, it's a two by two. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's been a minute since it's been worked on. Yeah. So. It's flowing about a gallon a minute. Which is not that different than what it was actually beforehand. Is it light too. What's that? Is it lead pipe too? Um, I can't say. I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna do this now? Oh, you gonna do, you gonna do this now? <laughs> really? I just wonder. Thank you. I just appreciate, God, I appreciate it. I'm sure it's not. Oh no, it's all. It's it's PVC. It's perfect. Stainless. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Mm. There are a lot of people in town who appreciate it. People from all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank Hearing you. no other comments about the published agenda, uh, we are going to move into executive session. ESA 313A1E. Thank you all for being here. Bye. Much appreciated.